Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, transforming the way people think and work so their organizations can thrive. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is John Driscoll. John is the founder and CEO of Naked Development, a creative agency that creates apps that stand out. They are the go-to agency for many Fortune 500 companies and most exciting startups in the world. Uh, Some of their clients include Bank of America, American Red Cross, and UPS. John has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years and lectured at Rackspace and the University of Southern California, among other places. He's also worked with organizations including Wells Fargo, the American Red Cross, and the Bank of America. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, John Driscoll. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate the, the invite. So first off, John, why do you do what you do? Uh, That's such a great question. Um, So I I would say, you know, from a very young age, I loved problem solving. And I look at businesses um, as problem solvers, essentially, whether that be a product or a service. What we're doing is trying to find a solution for something either consumers facing or businesses facing, whatever that is. That's what we do. And I love the challenge of grinding through that process. Sometimes that takes years and years to get through. Um, And I, I, I guess I'm, you know, some, my kids would probably just say I'm really stubborn and I, I just won't quit until I find that solution. So. And why is it so important for entrepreneurs to, to find a a repeatable model? Um, You know, it's everything uh, because you know, what many small businesses do and what you tend to do when you start is in the beginning, you don't really know how you're going to continue to get business. You don't know how you're going to continue to make satisfied customers. You don't know any of those things. And so I, I think the what you're trying to do in the beginning is to try to find something that you can continue to repeat over and over and over again. Because if you can't do that, you won't be in business very long. I see a brand as a promise that I didn't make that up. Seth Godin did. A brand is a promise. And so when you put it out there and you say, come to this company, whatever that company is, that name, that is promising people something in return for their money. And so essentially, if you can't repeat that, you know, which is why McDonald's and so many companies try to make sure that burger is exactly the same every time. Recently went to Austin, Texas. in and out burger is the same there as it is here in California. It's about that thing that they're delivering on this thing that they said they're going to do. And if you can't do that, you will not be in business very long. Why is it important for a brand to really stand for just one thing or a brand can't be all things to all people? And I think a lot of uh, especially especially knowledge based businesses try to service perhaps too many customers. The words they use the word we're a full service brand. Mm -hmm. Um, And why is that such a challenge? Gosh, Ed, you couldn't have said that any better, because I think what I find is the temptation, especially when you're early startup is to try to be all things to all people. And you want to be this smorgasbord, whatever you want, we do it all, you know? And the the problem with that is it sounds great, right? When you first start saying it, but the problem with that is you're not identified for anything. So nobody knows who you are. You have no identity. Um, You have almost a split personality as a company. And so people can't remember what you are. They just have no idea what you are. Um, You know, for my consultancy, we do apps specifically designed for startups. That is an extremely narrow focus in technology. People often say, why don't you do this other thing and this other thing? I'm like, you know what? We're known for this one thing. And what's great about that is you end up in this space that nobody's challenging you on. And if you've ever read the book, Blue Ocean Strategy, you know, it's what most of us do is we get in this bloodbath of competing in a market where everybody else is. And we we're just all just killing each other. Instead, go out into this market where you're all by yourself and nobody's challenging you. And if you're like us and you've spent the last 13 years perfecting that, 
you just don't have a lot of competition. I, you know, I get the question all the time. Who's your main competition? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I personally don't know. And honestly, that's the best thing. I look behind me and I don't really see a lot of people. And it's because we're in such a narrow focus. And so when you do all things, man, you're competing with everybody. You know, so I think it was, <laughs> yeah, I think it was Steve Jobs who said that, that uh, I'm most proud of the things that Apple hasn't done. Mm-hmm. So comment on that. Yeah, it's funny because I always tell people I'm coaching is like, get really good at saying no. Early entrepreneurs that I work with often are talking about, I have this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity. I'm like, man, if you're looking for opportunities, they're everywhere. But the main discipline is to say no to almost everything and really only chase a couple of things, you know. You mentioned Steve Jobs when he first came back to Apple, right? I think they had some 24, some projects that they were working on. I think it might have even been more than that. And he killed them all but four. And look what he did, right? And it's because when, you, when you're focused, you can do things well. You know, when you're doing all kinds of things, you're just kind of crappy at a lot of things. You're not going to be good at anything. And we have an exit question, John, that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? This is going to sound so cliche. I can't believe you brought up Steve Jobs, because I was going to say that. (laughs) And saying Steve Jobs is cliche anyways. But it was March 6, 2008, that I watched a keynote by him that changed my life. And that's why I've been chasing app development ever since. That was the first day apps came out. I would have to say him, because it was so impactful. And and it changed my life, you know, so much as far as the focus of what I was going to do. So I would say him and I would say why is because I love that striving for excellence, being so almost crazy. I don't think I would have liked him very much personally, but I think he because he was a little crazy. But I think being almost crazy and obsessed with solving the thing that you're promising to people. And if you do that, man, people always try to do business with you, 100%. It's not hard to get business when you're obsessed with solving people's problems. And lastly, John, how can somebody contact you? Um, Probably easiest way is go to nakeddev.com, naked, and then just dev for development.com. All right. John Driscoll, founder and CEO of Naked Development. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Ed. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.